Hello students, specialists, board members, parents, and whoever else may be listening to this video. My name is Kelly Barnes and I'm excited to welcome you to the first ever virtual National Student Leadership Academy. Well, I know we, we wish we could be in person right now. Let's take a moment to be thankful for the things that we have, the opportunity for us to gather together virtually to compete, to learn, to grow, to do better today than we did yesterday. I appreciate you taking the moment to, to listen to this thought for the day. And, and I'm going to start with a question, I guess, a simple question. And I know you can't answer in real time, but how many of you, by show of hands, are familiar with the, with the butterfly effect? Now, it's not the movie starring Ashton Kutcher. I'm talking about the actual butterfly effect. And, and some of you probably are, but some of you may not be. And, and for those of you who aren't, the butterfly effect, it was, it was actually first presented as a doctoral thesis in 1963. In 1963, a young man named Edward Lorenz presented his doctoral thesis at the New York Science Academy. And, and what happened was, was he pretty much got laughed out of the room. You see, the butterfly effect simply states that if a butterfly was to flap its wings in one portion of the world, it could put into effect air molecules that gather with other air molecules and get bigger and bigger and, and continue to grow. And a butterfly on one side of the continent flapping its wings could actually cause a hurricane on the other side of the world. And in 1963, when Professor Edward Lorenz presented his paper entitled The Butterfly Effect, he, he pretty much got lapped off stage. He, he almost got fired because it was a crazy idea. But like most wild stories, it became kind of a, a, an urban legend, a, a wise tale for scientists and researchers. And, and it wasn't until the 90s that a, a group of, of physicists actually did the research to find out that the butterfly effect is, is true. It works every single day in every single way. In fact, if you were to Google the butterfly effect, what you would find is it's, it's no longer a thought or a theory. It's, it's, it's an actual law, like the law of gravity. In fact, it's the law of sensitive dependence upon initial conditions. The law of sensitive dependence upon initial conditions. What does that mean? Well, for us today, as jobs for America's graduates, it means the decisions we make today, no, no matter how seemingly unimportant or small, have a huge impact on our future. Not just our future, but the future of our children, of our neighbors, our community members, the future of our country, the future of our world. So students, as, as you go throughout this this Leadership Academy, as you compete, as you learn, as you do your best to engage, think about the small, seemingly unimportant thoughts, movements, moments, ideas, or risks that you take, and how they will change your family tree from here to eternity. What does that mean? That means no matter who you are or where you are or when you are listening to this, there is a small decision that you can make today that will either help you or hurt you. That will either help the line of success in your life or it will bring you down and the people with you. There are small decisions that you can make that will ultimately change the course of history in your family tree. I encourage you, I thank you, and I implore you to continue to move forward in this organization. No matter if there's a pandemic going on, if it's 2020, 2010, or if it's 2035, to make sure you find out what you can do today to put yourself in a position for success tomorrow. As a thought for the day, I'd like to leave you with a quote from one of my favorite presidents in the world. It's a pretty famous quote, and it's called The Man in the Arena, and it was given by Theodore Roosevelt. And the quote simply says this, It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out where the strong man stumbled or how the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, 
whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But the person who does actually strive to do the deed, who knows the great devotions, the great enthusiasms, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who, at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place may never be among those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I love that quote. I love it for a lot of reasons, but mainly because nobody talks like that anymore. Of, of course, nobody uses those, those words, that language, that vernacular, but, but I honestly mean nobody talks to themselves like that anymore. Nobody sits down and, and encourages themselves to believe. Whether you're facing an overwhelming odd whether you're, you're facing a challenge that you seem will be easy, nobody talks to themselves of the idea of whether I fail or win, at least I dare greatly. Jobs for America's graduates, this is the time we need people to dare greatly. We need you to fail again and again because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. We need you to be able to fall down and to get up and to dust yourselves off and to move forward with excitement. That's what's going to make the difference in the next 20, 30, 40 years. That's what's going to be your butterfly effect. That small flap of a wing that changes things in a huge way. Jobs for America's graduates, my thought is simply this. When given the face, when given the choice, when given the opportunity to choose the hard road or the easy, my thought for you is why not choose something worth doing greatly? Why not choose something where if I fail, at least I grow in the process? I wish you way more than luck this year. I hope that you take advantage of this moment, this opportunity, this virtual conference. And I know for sure I'll see you at the top of the hill down the road.